Hello once again, it's Nick here from Nick's News and Reviews of course and this time we're looking at F17 Challenge, um, a Formula 1 game developed by Hollow Dream and published by Team 17 in 1993. Uh, this is a one player arcade game, uh, let's have a look at the various options here. But um, I thought I'd uh, upload this Amiga game shortly after the Spectrum game I did of pole position because this game is everything that pole position aspired to be but the technology wasn't quite there and um, this does it a lot better although it's not really a simulation game more of an arcade as we go into a world championship uh, in South Africa no chance of rain which is always good uh, we qualify first then have the main race two qualifying laps now this game was originally supposed to be called F1 Challenge but Team 17 ran into a bit of a uh, few problems with the FIA the Formula 1 body um, they wanted them to pay big bucks for the F1 name or even the, the name Grand Prix so they settled for F17 Challenge but essentially it is a Formula 1 game so we take off in this red car with no name because we can't afford the license and let's see how far we can get uh, it might be Michael Schumacher who knows but I don't know how accurate these tracks are there to the um, actual Kailami I believe it's in South Africa but updates really well and the thing I like mainly about this game is the um, sounds of the engines I think they've done a pretty good job there road handling isn't too bad moves at quite a right rate of knots and unlike pole position we've got scenery each side with uh, proper grass rather than just black background go quick around the inside of course here the lap races are more of a hindrance in this game than, than anything else not recognising those adverts there, Swallow or Team 17, they're the um, company that made the game. Whoops, bit of a crash. But a rather fun game this one, dipping in and out. Uh, my main complaint of it, of course, if I got to nitpick, is it is rather too easy. And we've gone on here in um, normal mode, but I think we should have just selected pro mode. Now in terms of the reviews that come out at the game, uh, 1993 at the time from various Amiga magazines, um, it, they either hated or loved this game, they either gave it high marks or low marks. I don't know what they was really expecting here, but it's Formula 1 of essence without having a Formula 1 licence tie-in. I am of the camp that quite like it, really. It's not my go-to game by any means, but um, I can see what they were trying to do. You look back at Spectrum games like Checkered Flag and Pole Position and a few other ones. This is this is um, nearest to the arcades, as I said. Would have expected to see this in the arcades at the time. But it's a very smooth. Um, when you come up to a lap rider, that's a smooth draw rate. So you know exactly where they are on the track. I like the sparks that come up every now and again. I've got slow. You do lose a lot of time though. Now you see the display at the top there. Um, this is what I also like, end of the lap um, ticking down, so on 2,200 and something metres to the end, so you know how far you've got to go to the end of the lap, so I like that touch. In the middle there in World Championships, it tells you the distance to your next opponent, got the best laps there, what lap you're on, the position, and also critical is how much damage you're taking. Now you'll see I've taken 75% damage, if that goes up to 100, of course, the, um, the game stops. You can repair the damage by coming in for a pit stop, and it gradually goes down. Can't select what types of tyres you want to use though, so occasionally it rains, but um, you have to be a bit careful then on the bends because you can't change your tyre compound. So yes, not a simulation at all. But um, yes, um, good good for a bit of relaxing really, doesn't take much brain work at all. Uh, see there's the name Bernie you might see on the scenery every now and again. And that's, um, yes, maybe a dig at Bernie Ecclestone, who knows that they had to pay well, essentially you had to pay lots of money for the F1 license for a game that was in the same. So because of that, you don't have real Formula 1 drivers. I think when we see the leaderboard, it'll be all programmers at Team 17, and maybe at a rival office or a magazine as well. So we've done our two laps. We've come in with a 122.563. Let's see where that puts us on the grid in normal mode. As I said, I think we're going to get, despite all those errors we made, I think we're going to get pole position straight away. But we're not going to do the whole championship here. Maybe have a look at two races. And then I look at my favourite track, which I always like to look at at Formula 1, which is Monaco. Yes, D Pleasance. And we've got pole position by about 7 seconds, uh, and that is pretty much unheard of in modern day Formula 1. 
Yeah, so we definitely should have gone on pro mode. So I think this has been quite easy and race to win this one. Um, it's five laps. You can do up to 15 if you want, but I won't put you through that. So let's just see how our race um, side is up. Oh, we've got a chance of rain here. I do like the rain effect in this game. Not bad for 1993 anyway. Doesn't hold up to the model modern Formula 1 simulations by Codemasters. I think it's by Codemasters, correct me if I'm wrong. Here we go then. I'm, pro I'm pretending I'm Michael Schumacher in this red car, but it hasn't got really a, a right uh, name. Could be any car. Oops, not a very good start there. Car's gone straight past me. Yellow and green. Might be a Benetton, who knows. Right, and he's, he's weaving around. I don't think that's allowed. You'll find that a lot in these sorts of games on various formats. The car's AI is programmed just to weave left and right. Modern day, I think they get a five race ban or at least a grid penalty or a fine. But this game doesn't have too many tight bends. There's a lot of sweeping bends and I think we'll find that when I, um, because I'm sure I'm going to do it in this review, have a look at Monaco and you'll just see um, the vast difference there. So um, based on based on tracks that are out there, real life tracks in essence, but not really that accurate. Kyle Army there. I don't think you could... Um, if someone didn't tell you what track this was, I don't think you'd guess it was Kyle Army. Oh, it started raining. Yes, yeah, so the handling's gone a bit iffy. But dig that engine sound, great effort. The modern day Formula 1 cars, so we're recording this in 2014. The Formula 1 season, they've just brought turbos back. And um, they don't sound as good as this game, which is saying a lot. Very a deeper sound. I like these high pitched sounds. So this uh, Formula 1 game of 1993, which isn't really a Formula 1 game, it hasn't got the license, sounds better than the Formula 1 cars of 2014. Go figure. There's not many, uh, this, is, this is what they always do in these sort of games as well, they put trees on each side of the track. See them going past the left there, don't get that in modern Formula 1, bit too tricky. Lots of signs telling us where to go, chuck a right here. Just concentrate, so well done Holland Dream for designing this. I'm not sure this was a full price game, it might have been a budget game, so good value. But uh, pretty easy to uh, win the championship. We've got no damage so far, and that's always good. I wouldn't be surprised if we start lapping races soon, and that could be the main problem. Our main um, enemy in this game to winning the race is getting past lap races without um, writing off the car. But looking at this massive speed differential, I think we could probably pit stop on every lap and still win. You won't get that in a real race. Yeah, I like this rain effect. It's keeping it interesting. No interaction with your pit crew, there's no radio message in this. Fairly basic. So I've uploaded quite a few Formula 1 games. Uh, Vroom, this, pole position, checkered flag. Probably missed a few others. Floor it. Oh, Super Monaco Grand Prix as well, let's not forget that. I think I prefer, well I don't know if I prefer Super Monaco to this. Um, they, they both come at it from a different angle, both have their uh, merits. Can't do a world championship in Super Monaco of course, because uh, that's just based on Monaco. 130. Well this rain's definitely slowing us down. Um, we've got automatic gears here, if you want a bit more of a challenge you can select uh, manual gears. I can't see the point in manual gears in an arcade game. It's no, it's no advantage. Oops, so we, so we crashed into that car and took 17% damage. Which, uh, oops, <laughs> yes, the, you see what I mean, I think it'll be game over. They should wave the blue flags at these lap drivers, we're taking 31% damage, God knows what this car looks like now. What does a car look like with 31% damage? Quite bad, I would think. Right, get out of the way, you fools. Deary me, I think after the race is over, I'm going to go up the pit lane and punch those drivers in the face. That could have cost me the race, 31% damage. What we all met? 1700 meters from the pits more or less. I think we're gonna have to come in and do a bit of repairing I think. Damn what the pit crew are gonna do, they have to replace the nose cone and the whole front of the car because the rear don't look too bad. But admittedly you never see damage on this car. Even if it said 99% damage it still pretty much look like what you're seeing on screen. So we swoop past these three. Oh, that was close. 
Right, 700 and something metres. Get ready for the pits. I don't know if the pits are straight after the finishing straight in this track, but uh, that's how it um, stands on every track we play. Oops, didn't take that very well. The rain seems to have gone, there's no puddles anywhere. Oh, it's coming back again. Speak of the devil. Right, let's go into a pit stop here. Right, where's the crew? Where's the crew? They've turned up. Get working, lads. See my damage coming down to zero. Go. 3.7 seconds to repair where all that damage. They're a fine pit crew. That's why I keep them on. I don't know who my team uh, uh, mate is in this race, but he's nowhere near me. I think he's going to really gonna get sacked. Would be nice to have a rear view mirror. Super Monaco had that. This one doesn't. Bit of a pain to program, I would have thought. But it would be nice to have it. Would have added a bit of an extra dimension to the game. Certainly having a few showers in this race as we career around lap 4, position 1 of 20. Oops. What would you... That was a close one. We almost crashed here. I don't know many different coloured... Oh, dearie me. That is awful. That was past Maldonado weaving. Awful, that was. We're lucky we're not upside down in a gravel trap. Right, let's get past the... I don't know what speed these cars are going. What speed are they going at? 40 miles an hour. They shouldn't even be in the race. Get out of the way. Right, okay. Good, good, good. I don't think the South African Grand Prix is on the um, on the list of races at the moment, in the current 2014 season. I don't know why I keep saying 2014, it's going to date that video terribly. So if you're watching this in the year 2020, um, yes. Comment below, that's what I always say, try and generate any activity. Not that I'm desperate, but I am secretly, really. What is this channel doing in the year 2020, I wonder? Is it even still here? And um, at the time of recording, I think we've got 112 subscribers, so thank you to all of you people. This is 2012. If it's still saying 112, I'm not doing a very good job. If it's saying 2, something's gone disastrously wrong. But uh, anyway, let's just concentrate on the lap. I think we just went past a car there that retired. 300, hmm, I thought it was going 310 kilometres an hour then, that was quite good. So this is the last lap. I would wave to the crowd, but I can't see them anywhere. Health and safety, um, still um, dependent on plant planting these trees everywhere. If I were into one of those, I think I'm dead instantly. That needs to be looked into. I think Ockenheim in the old days had lots of trees when it went into the uh, the forests in the old days. But I uh, won't see anything like that anymore. Ockenheim in Germany, of course. You knew that. I think the next race after this one is Mexico, which is another race not on the um, current Grand Prix circuit. Get out of the way, you. Dearie me. Dearie me. 11% damage. I'm doing quite well with only 11%. I think a milk float would go quicker than these people. Uh, milk float, if they don't exist in your time 2020, is in a little electric car that uh, went about 20 miles an hour delivering milk, um, left it on your doorstep, so when you was out at work, um, and the sun was shining, by the time you got back it was uh, pretty much butter or cheese. Who invented that idea? I don't know. Anyway, success! We've won! The checkered flag's waving! Race over position one. Well, that wasn't really much of a test, really, because I think we could have crashed a million times and still won. Uh, Needs to get this on pro mode. But even then, I think it's a bit easy. Mm, taking a little while to load. But there we are. Congratulations, first position. Ten points awarded. Nowadays, you get uh, so you get 25 now for a race win, so that's uh, dated already. Ten points, eh? Couldn't do much for that nowadays. Next race, I believe, is Mexico. Mexico! I don't mean that's much like the um, the real-life track either. A lot of sweeping bends on this. I think you could probably get around without actually um, braking at all. What we'll do in Mexico, we won't do the whole race. I think we'll just do a qualifying lap, and then we'll scoot over to Monaco. Maybe take a different car out, because the, the way I judge how good a Formula 1 game is is um, by how well they've recreated Monaco. 
Uh, Monaco has a lot of detail in it. Uh, generally as a place, lots of tunnels, and um, it's the uh, jewel of the Formula One crown, although it's practically impossible to overtake. So, see how much detail they've bunged into there. We'll just qualify at Mexico, though, for the sake of things. Bit of practice, and then scoot over to the Principality of Monaco. Stay with me. Right, no chance of rain. Well, that suits me. I don't think Mexico's known for its rain, is it? Do they get a lot of thunderstorms in Mexico? What's the weather like in Mexico at the moment? Let me know. That was desperate, wasn't it? Comment below about the weather of Mexico. That, that's just too desperate. But do it anyway. Create some activity. What's that dome in the background? I don't know. Some sort of crystal structure. It must be a football stadium, maybe. Maybe it's the National Football Stadium. Right, we've got a bit of desert either side. So the trees are still there. Let's floor it. Imagine doing this speed and going right into a tree. Right, two laps to show our stuff. I don't know what the race course of Mexico is actually called, you know. Just listen to the engine sound as he accelerates down through the gears. That best lap might be easy to beat. 99 hours, 99 minutes, 0 0.990. That must have been a hell of a lap. Maybe it was the milk float. To be honest, I think pole position's in the bag. I mean, we got pole position in the last race by about seven seconds. So we're probably going to do it by that sort of time again, unless I have an amazing crash, and then I'll probably only get pole by two seconds. Can you imagine if someone got pole position by seven seconds nowadays? The commentators would be, like, um, speechless. Whoops. Yeah, that held me up there. Oh, nice tunnel. It was very brief. I don't think any track's got a tunnel apart from Monaco. I think they might have just add that in on a, on a whim. It's, oops, oh dear. There's supposed to be a cheat in this game that when you hit a tunnel, um, if you've got near 100% damage, you can go into the side, hit fire button, keep it down, if you're lucky, go to zero. Which is a bit of a risky tactic. I see um, Team 17 are advertising their games every now and again, you'll see. Super Frog on the left. See, just about as I uh, crank up the damage to 78% for no good reason. Let's see if we can damage it on purpose. Boop. 89%. It's easier to damage a real Formula 1 car than this. Let's go 91%, 92%. I so want to see what a Formula 1 car looks like with 99% damage. Still moving though. Alright, 100% damage. Qualifying over. I might have, might have a good rebuild to do overnight here. So what time did that do? Did we get pole position? In the Mexico Grand Prix. Yes. Got it by 12 seconds. Well, that's a little bit ridiculous. A nice looking game, well programmed, but uh, that's ridiculously too easy. But as I said, we are on normal mode. So I think we'll come out of this, try and crank up the difficulty and zip over to Monaco, which historically in Formula 1 games is the trickiest track. The easiest one to smash your car up on. Where the true driving skill comes out rather than top speed. On those two tracks I just done, there wasn't really much fault processes going into it. Just floored it and um, eased off the accelerator every now and again. Um, how do we escape out of a race? I'm sure I can sort it out. It's one of these buttons. Right, that's good. This should take us back to the main menu. We'll select a different car. Maybe a nice white one, perhaps. D Pleasance did not finish. Well, we, we aborted it. Put a second in the championship. That's all immaterial, because we're not doing the full championship. Because no one in their right mind will sit and watch a review that goes on for two hours, I doubt. Certainly not with me talking in it, anyway. I'm glad you're still here at this point. Well done, you. Right, loading. Hopefully. Good old Amiga games. Each one brings back a different level of nostalgia. I'm sure you've got memories of playing it maybe with friends or so, as in school. Or round about that time anyway. The games that you grew up with tend to be the strongest ones. Build up your platform to go on to the modern games. I don't know what I'm talking about. 
Right, that's the white car with a, a red wing plate. Edit names, I don't think we'll bother. Level rook, cool, rookie, how easy would that be? Pro. The game mode is normal in arcade. But, um, yeah, don't really want to do arcade. This, uh, the main racing le me level is the best. I mean, both both modes do feel pretty arcadey anyway. Uh, Monaco, I think they want that. What else? Canada, France, Great Britain, Germany, Ireland. Ireland? I don't recall a Grand Prix of Ireland. Was there a Grand Prix of Ireland? Don't recall that one. Okay, let's uh, get back to Monaco. That's what we're interested in. Right. Maybe judge for yourself how close is this to the actual real Monaco circuit. No chance of rain. Well, that's good because rain in Monaco will be a right pain in the bottom. Come on. I'm eager to start. This is where the real races are known. Oh, the anticipation. Getting excited. Right, here we are. Well, it looks a bit Monaco-ish. A four-lane straight. This must be the starting bit. The Sand of Vot, which is a tight right-hand corner. Oh, the, the pit lane's in the wrong place for a start. Yeah, that's a very, very, very fast corner. That's not like Monaco. Generally, this bit's uphill, but this looks downhill. Yes, this is not like Monaco whatsoever. Four Four-lane motorway the whole time. There's no four-lane motorway in Monaco, it's all pretty much um, condensed. Lamp post there by the side also. How are they getting away with this? I'd say it was Monaco-esque, but this no way is the Monaco, Monaco street circuit. Um, I'm quite fascinated to see what the tunnel looks like, if they've included the tunnel, which surely they must. Oh, there it is. Mm, this is a fairly long tunnel. Right, there's the tunnel. That seemed to turn up a bit too early in the track. What's the time? 47 seconds. Yeah, this 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 um, is cheeky to say it's Monaco. You never do these speeds at Monaco. 306 kilometres an hour at Monaco, is that possible? I don't think so. But fun nevertheless. Um, I quite like this white car, although it handles exactly the same as a red one. I think it handles exactly the same as all the cars. Oh, another tunnel! Two tunnels in Monaco. Hmm. Is there two tunnels in Monaco nowadays? Perhaps they built another one that I'm unaware of. Right, 1 minute 16, that's probably good enough for pole anyway. Let's uh, do another lap. Let's just repair the car. We've taken a lot of damage there. I think that's the main difference in the pro mode as well. The, um, the damage is a lot higher for um, slight knocks. So that might hinder you. But um, we've repaired it in uh, about 9.8 seconds. Reality would say this will take about three hours, maybe more, maybe a night job, an overnighter as they say. This is the quickest Monaco uh, speed you'll ever see in your whole life. I'm starting to get used to getting past these lap races now. Because I've got about at least about 12 seconds in hand each lap, I can just completely ease off and go past them at my leisure. Um, slow cars weaving left and right, right and left across the track in Monaco is not something you ideally want. Especially when there's treats either side. The fans seem a little bit far away. Tunnel 1. Oh dear, that took 53% damage for that. Yes. Runoff areas. Well, can't run off too far. Oops, 81%. Car's still going along quite nicely though. Who's put all these signs up? Deary me. Can't see anyone, can't see any officials there with yellow flags or anything, or blue flags. That's because they're not. Team 17, got their advert in every track, well done boys. F7, there you go, that's the, um, that's the second tunnel. Because now Monaco has two tunnels, which we all know about. 127, well, that's because I had a few crashes. Right, now, into the race. Is that good enough for pole position? I think, despite doing pro, I think it still might be, you know. Let's wait. Yeah, look, pole position by 11 seconds over A. Robinson of the famous Wolf team. 
Those Wolf Formula One cars. Deary me. Too easy, lads. Too easy. Is there is there um, a cheat where you can make it... Um, this is a bit on me saying this. Is there a cheat where you can make the other components go faster? Because I think if they could go faster, the game would be pretty exciting. Actually, it might be pretty annoying, actually, the way the car spins when it gets a slight touch. It's all going to be about not winning the race, because I think that's a given. It's all going to be about not picking up 100% damage. So let's go. It's the last race of the review. Five laps. 22 starters. I'll probably not get the best of his starts. Right, I weave across. And he goes the other way. Pass. Damn. Curses, blast. And other swear words. Well, other soft swear words. Curses and blast are okay. That's as far as I'm going to go. If possible. Look at the amount of weaving going on. If I'd hit that and flipped 50 feet into the air and crashed into the sea, I might have um, been prompted to do a swear word. But curses and blasts is, is uh, sufficient. Right, we're off. Up the hill, imaginary. Bends the wrong way. Oh dear, I can't defend this. I, I don't mean... Are those buildings in the distance, are they Monaco-esque or are they based on real ones? I think it's Monaco-esque again. Because there they are, coming in from the left. Tunnel 1. Nice lights. Here we go. No bar rain circuit on this, of course. Ah, uh, they didn't race there then. Or Korea. Or, I'm not sure, I don't think we'll go to the United States either. This is retro racing, if you didn't notice. Let it off, it is based, uh, come out in 1993, that's over 20 years ago now, at time of recording. If you're watching this in a far-flung future, if YouTube hasn't exploded, um, it could be over 100 years, and you could be watching this in a history lesson. If so, um, hello history people! Actually, you probably have an implant. You probably don't have to go to lessons now, you just have an implant, you plug it into your brain, um, you're only in at class for two minutes, and job done. Floor it. Yes, this is Monaco Racing. Easy peasy. 8% damage, I think we're okay. I mean, lapped races are going to be um, our problem. But as long as we don't get 100% damage all on one lap, uh, I think we can make as many pit stops as we want. Uh, it's going to be okay. But if I had to make a judgement call, I'd say I like this game. If you're not liking it, um, what you should do is watch my previous view on the spectrum of pole position and then compare it to this because that is the natural progression. And the leap between the two is huge. So you have to look at evolution in these games and judge it for the time it was released because it's come on on leaps and bounds since that point. And again, from this point to modern day games, um, it's jumped again. So, um, huge difference. Who knows where we'll be in 20 years' time? Well, you know if you're watching this in 20 years' time. Comment below. What are we on? Lap 2, as I waffle all away. Um, the sound doesn't change when you go through the tunnel. Um, that would have been good if, it, if the sound echoed just slightly different, or felt slightly different. So let's just go pit stop, repair that bit of damage, out again. 0.9 of a second, is that the quickest pit stop of all time? I think it might be. Didn't have our own garage there, the men just turned up. Changed the tyres straight away. They are consummate professionals. And this single race mode, um, it's just got the, um, the name of the circuit in the middle. Doesn't tell you the distance between the end of the lap. I don't know why they're doing that. Maybe they wanted it to feel a little bit different then. Take away that advantage. Would have been nice to have it. But um, it's, it's good so um, each mode feels a little bit different. Would have liked a ghost mode. But I'm not sure. Oh, they probably could have programmed it. I'm not sure. Could they? Did any Amiga racing games add a ghost mode? And when I say that is you do your fastest lap. And the computer remembers it. And then um, recreates it. Oh I think hard driving did have a sort of ghost. But I don't know how accurate that was. Sort of like saved your lap and then um, you had to beat it the next time you qualified. So I've just answered my own question. But if there are any other ones, comment below. Let me know. Just Amiga though. I don't think Spectrum could have handled it. Or Game Boy. Oh no, Game Boy did. See, I'm having an argument with myself now. On Super Mario you had a ghost mode. 
I'm gradually going crazy from review to review. 129.718. I'm not sure that's a good time for Monaco, the real Monaco, or not. But I know it's been quite some years before someone's wrapped it round a lamppost. 1% damage, 2 laps to go. Just look out for lap races and Bob's your auntie with one. What I'm trying to think, what white Formula One cars have there been? There was arrows, wasn't there, this era? It was white and red. Maybe this is based on an arrows car. BMW come a bit later. You take 12% damage. Well, that was a bit of a let off. The Jaguar racing team. Were they white? I think they were green. Bar Racing, they were white, but they weren't around in 1993, I don't think. Oh dear, we're doing a good way to muck this up. I think we'll have to do another pit stop. 39% damage. Lap races in Monaco are the bane of my life at the moment. Commentators going crazy that they're not getting out of the way. Yeah, I don't know how far we got to the end of that. We're on 1 minute 8. The general lap's taking, what, 1 minute 25, 1 minute 30. We must be coming up to the end a little bit soon. So unless anything catastrophic happens, I think uh, we're okay. We'll do a glory boy last lap. And then we can say we're the winners of the Monaco Grand Prix. Or at least in an alternate reality on a track that's supposed to be it. Right, pits. Because the pits, the pits straight is definitely not after the finishing straight at Monaco. It's right near the end of the lap. You have to do a really tight corner to get in. When you come out the pits in Monaco, you go a tight right and rejoin the track. Sometimes there's a few incidents there. But um, that's not how this track is laid out, for sure. So we started with 22 cars. See on the total on the top right, there's 20. So two have come a cropper somewhere. One lap to go. It's all about judging quickly when the next lap corner is. But I'm not learning the track very well. Sometimes I'm milliseconds late turning in. But when you've got 11 seconds in hand a lap, um, I don't think you've got too much to worry about, really. I could probably stop for an ice cream, maybe have some dinner, uh, get my shoes polished and the car waxed so it looks good for the photo finish at the end. But uh, yes, way, 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 and four other ways, too easy. This is pro mode, remember? I think a race is pretty much um, in the bag here. Go past those three boys. Oops, 7% damage. Get out of the way, fella. I'll let him off for that. But how many crashes can you get away with in Monaco and still go and win? I think I've set something of a record here. Um, There's no mode to set damage off. Here we go. The, the famous second tunnel of Monaco now. Which everyone expect. Guy with his flag. Get ready to wave that flag. He's done it. He does a bit of weaving. I'd like to do some donuts as well, but um, I can't. Programming will not allow it. So there we go. So that was F117 Challenge, a Formula 1 game on the Commodore Amiga. Hope you liked seeing that one and the evolution. Until next time then, goodbye. Goodbye.